Hey guys, um, I'm Ajin this. I'm gonna be doing things a little bit differently for this episode. I haven't posted in a while, I know, I'm sorry. Um, I've been really, not really too busy. I've been traveling and taking a lot of pictures and hanging out with friends and some studying. Uh, I haven't posted a video in a while, I'm sorry. I'm gonna do it right now, actually. I've been inspired recently, too, so here we go. This episode is gonna be a little different, as I said before. Uh, it's not going to be mainly my face talking. Um, I'm going to be showing you my computer. And basically, everything uh, that I use on my computer to study Japanese. Okay, here's my desktop. The first thing I want to show you guys is ROMs and emulators. An emulator is essentially an application that can run old video games or even recent, some recent video games too. Mainly old video games, mainly small, smaller video games like uh, Game Boy Advance games and Nintendo DS games. You can see I have a, a lot of Nintendo DS games here. This is how you can learn Japanese with video games, is if you get emulators, applications, and download ROMs, which are basically the game files that emulators use to run to play the games, and you can play them like that. The, the thing is though, you would have to look for Japanese specific ROMs. This is a uh, Pokemon Fire Red version Japanese ROM that I have here. Uh, so this is how you study Japanese with ROMs and emulators. You read Japanese. <laughs> you read Japanese and any words that you don't know you look up and you memorize them. Kono ki wa nandaka kiresou da. So uh, kono is this, ki wa is this tree. Nandaka somehow, some way Kire souda looks like it can be cut down, and you can break this down even further. Pokemon is a little more difficult, I think, because it doesn't have any kanji. Um, maybe you can change it. I've actually never tried. We can go to sette, which is settings. Hanashi no speed. Owaru, yeah. So with this specific version of Pokemon, it doesn't look like you can actually elect to use kanji. I know when I play... Um, Animal Crossing, Dobutsu no Mori, on my actual DS in like real life, not in an emulator. There, uh, not Animal Crossing. I'm sorry. Um, the more recent Pokemon games, the more recent Pokemon games, they do have options to include kanji, or just keep it all in hiragana and katakana. I didn't really like that because it's sometimes kind of hard to see, to understand what's being said when it's just hiragana and katakana. Pokemon no hinshi, like hinshi, this word I'm not really sure about. So what I'll do is I'll open up my the dictionary that I always use. And I like tangorin.com, I really like tangorin. And then you type in Japanese, not in Romaji, Japanese hinshi, this is probably the on the verge of death. Let's see if we get anything out of just hiragana. Part of speech, verge of death. And that's it. So, judging from the uh, context of what this is, of what this person is saying, I'm pretty sure this hinshi is not part of speech, but actually dying, like on the verge of death. And then, actually, when you do a little research, you come to find out that hinshi jotai is a specific term to Pokemon, which just means fainted and not actually dead. <laughs> Anyways, that brings me to my next topic, which is online dictionaries, Japanese English dictionaries. I love Tangorin. You can create an account and make lists and stuff. They also have a very handy uh, multi radical search. So you can search by radicals or the elements that make up each kanji. I really, really love this feature. I use it a lot. You can, they also have a common kanji thing where you can look up general use kanji, Joyo kanji, or JLPT kanji or the 2500 most frequently used kanji in newspapers or even name kanji 983 of them 
So it's a very, very helpful website. Um, they've got like specialized words, classical Japanese names, and plenty of examples. I love the examples. Um, for example, Shuzai is what I'm thinking of. Shuzai. This is the general definition, collecting data. It also gives you like information on the kanji and stuff, so you can click the kanji here. And it will show you like different fonts if you hover over it. Whether or not it's common, this kanji is very common. The radical, the strokes, the elements that make up the kanji, the Chinese pronunciation of this character, and the hangul, the Korean pronunciation of this character when uh, Korean studied in school. And also the nanori, or sometimes name, uh, the reading used in names. Uh, Tangurin also tells you like what level kanji this is in school. This is general use kanji that is typically taught in the third grade, and it is JLPT N3. It gives you stroke by stroke diagrams as well as compounds, typical words that this character is used in, and also provides codes and indices. I I do a lot of writing about J Japanese and kanji, and I use this all the time. It's really indispensable, especially the Unicode characters. It really is a lifesaver. There's also a really cool feature to find words containing this kanji, beginning with, ending with, etc, etc. What I like though is the examples. When I'm not sure exactly what a word means or how to use it, I click the examples section and it shows me how to use the word in context of a sentence. This word isn't so common. Uh, which is why I looked it up. So having example sentences like this is a lifesaver. You can also click on any word within the example sentence to find like the meaning or even a particle to see what kind of particle it is, stuff like that. And the next dictionary is probably the most well-known, jisho.org. They, jisho, both jisho and tangorin share the same source code when it comes to uh, words and entries and stuff like that so they pretty much have all the same things I have found though that sometimes they differ and when I can't find something in Tangorin I usually type it in Jisho and it really helps they also have a draw feature you can draw the kanji uh, so you can just do that whatever and it brings it up for you really useful you can also find by radicals as well, similar to Tangorin. I actually prefer Tangorin to Jisho just only because Tangorin looks better. I don't like the layout and the color of Jisho. There's, there's no color. It's not fun at all. Anyways, another uh, website that is super helpful, especially when you're doing kanji, kanji research, is this kanji.sljfaq.org website. You literally can just write, oops, write whatever kanji you're trying to look up, and it will bring up what it thinks you're trying to write. I usually just copy this into Tangorin and look up whatever information I need to find. The next, uh, the next resource I want to introduce you to is. Uh, Safari Kai. If you're using the Safari web browser, uh, Safari Kai allows you to, when activated, hover over. When you activate it, hover over Japanese, and it will bring up the definitions and how to pronounce the words that you hover over. For example, bushu, radical of a kanji character. I have found sometimes that it's not always so accurate and sometimes I have to manually copy and paste text into Tangorin or Jisho to actually get the definition and how to pronounce the characters but most of the time it's really great and I use it all the time I believe for other web browsers you it's called uh, Rikai-kun and Rikai-chan Tabun, maybe um, you'll have to google that one they're all add-ons for your browsers and they're super convenient One website that I stumbled upon recently, actually didn't stumble upon it, um, Tofuga made an article about it, and it is absolutely fantastic, I love it, Boonpro. Boonpro is a website dedicated to helping you study and review grammar, and it groups grammar by JLPT level, so if you go here to lessons, you have to sign up for an account, 
they have JLPT N5 to N1. Unfortunately, they only have N5, N4, and N3 lessons done and ready uh, and actually usable. For N2, it says coming relatively soon, and for N1, coming a bit later. I am at the N2 level, so I was kind of hoping they had N2 grammar, but for now, I've just been looking at the N3, and there's actually some grammar patterns I'm not too strong on. I know them, I've learned them. I'm just not too strong on them, so I'm studying them at the moment. And there are some actually that I've never seen before, like this amari. Normally when I study amari, it means not so much. The opposite of yoku, right? Most of you should know that from like beginning Japanese. It's a very elementary uh, word, but there's other uses for the word amari. There's actually two other that I had no idea. And I found them through here. Um, let's see if I could... Ah, this one, amari ni. So much so that, or to something that, da 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 da. The same with this Amadi. So it's it's good, it's still good if you know you're an N2 or even at the N1 level because you may find grammar patterns that you don't know or you skipped or you just had no idea were there. So I'm in the middle of reviewing these. I can't review it right now. I, I have about six hours until my next review. Um, but I can show you what when you click on a term, what it looks like, darake, full of, this has kind of a negative meaning, I'm not sure if they exactly covered that, you can add notes now too, I think that's a new feature as of today, you go to examples, it gives you plenty of example sentences, which I love, highlighting the word and its um, English translation, yuka wa doro darake ni natta, the floor became covered in dirt, etc, etc, then you go to readings, and here it gives um, links to references that actually define the structure. So, and if you want to add this to like your review bin so that you can review it, you actually have to check mark each of these um, resources. You don't actually have to click them and read through them. You can just, you know, if you understand it through this example here, you can just check them all yourself and automatically it will be added to your review bin. The next thing I want to talk about is Wanikani. This is a program to help you learn kanji, uh, specifically, uh, well, kanji and words that use kanji, as well as radicals. A lot of curricula don't really emphasize radicals or elements within the kanji, and Wanikani does, and it's great. If you've used the Remembering the Kanji series by Haysig, it's basically this, but online and supercharged. Like, I love this. It's amazing. Um, at first, I didn't really like Wanikani. I didn't quite understand it. I didn't really under—I didn't really see the value of it. Um, after a while, I did, and I bought a lifetime subscription. I'm currently on level 19 in the painful category. It's not as painful as it sounds, but it's it's pretty good. I've also downloaded extensions. Extensions? Is that what they're called? Yeah, I guess they're called extensions. I've downloaded extensions to help me really visualize my progress. And wow, I've, I haven't been doing this <laughs> for about a week, so I'm super behind on my Wani Kani. I used to do it like religiously every morning and every night. And that's really the best way to progress through it is doing it at least once every day. Probably twice is the best. I'm going to quick do a review right now so you can just see what Wanikani is like and the benefit of it. Start session. So basically what you're given is the Japanese and you're asked to identify either its meaning or its English translation. Radicals are blue and when you're given a radical there is no Japanese pronunciation, just the English meaning. This one, uh, I always confuse this with like cow, noon, I think this is noon, yeah. When you get it right, the word, the character, will be bumped up. Uh, there's a bunch of levels. Guru is, uh, I think, right before burn. And burn is when you've you know studied it so much, you've studied the crap out of it, you don't have to ever really study it again.
one of the final websites uh, I want to show you is called Lang8. A lot of you probably already know this. Um, right now, for some reason, signups are suspended. I'm not sure why. I think they want to try and push their high native app right here, but I have an account, so I'm just going to log right in. Uh, here we go. Lang8 is a website to upload your, uh, in Japanese we call them sakubun, or uh, compositions in English. You upload them in the target language that you want to learn, and natives of that language will correct your works. For example, Pull. Let's see. Someone corrected my October Nayami, October October Troubles. I guess you would call it. Anyways, I uploaded this <laughs> kind of relatively long uh, par few paragraphs of my thoughts, and I also uploaded the English translation. And these natives here uh, went ahead and just corrected everything gave some comments, more more corrections, more comments, more comments, more corrections. What I do after I receive all these corrections and comments is I bought actually a small little notebook and I write down the corrections that I think are good, that I think are the best, and I rewrite my Sakubun by hand in the notebook with the corrections that I like. Super convenient. I love Lang8. So I kind of lied. <laughs> this is actually the final thing I want to show you guys. It is Anki. Anki, this right here, Anki, is a wonderful, wonderful program that... It's a space repetition flashcard program. And basically it's to help you learn words and you know, kanji, even grammar, you can learn grammar through this. I prefer to leave the grammar to BoomPro, but I also go through the Nihongo Sou Matome series' uh, kanji book and their vocabulary book, and I basically insert everything into Anki and I make flashcards. My, now I know there are other flashcards like this on the Anki, Anki database, and I don't really like those. <laughs> I don't like them at all, actually. So I've made my own. Um, for the vocabulary, it looks kind of plain, just black and white. You know, if you understand it, you do good. Uh, Koshi lecture, good. Rabudu uh, hagas, take off a label, you know, keep going. Shigoto ga ikigai da, work is life, basically. Uh, I can't keep up this work pace. Okay, so this might be one that I don't know. Um, I can't keep up this pace. Karada ga motanai. Karadaga motanai. Ah, I got it. Okay. Well, anyways, let me show you my kanji decks. Write the kanji for an adjustment. Um, basically, I've just taken the words in the kan Sogo Matome series' N2 kanji book, and I've just inserted them all here. And there are two versions for each word. You can either write the kanji for the English word, and then the kanji comes up, Cho will say, I had no idea about that one, so I'm going to hit again. Or, you can type the English meaning. This is... Dankai. Level... Mm. Dankai. Kaidan janai. Dankai. Level, stage, phase. I got one of them, so I usually do good for that. And that's... You can, you know, check with Anki your uh, reviews and stuff like that. I haven't been reviewing lately, but I probably should get back to that. <laughs> Anyways, I might advertise my Anki decks a lot later once I actually complete and finish them. They will be super useful to anyone studying JLPT, N3, or N2, and N1 someday. So that's about it. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. Go ahead and give this video a thumbs up, a like, a share, comment, share with me your uh, the things that you use to study Japanese or learn Japanese with on the computer. Hopefully I can incorporate them in future videos. That's about it. Peace guys.